Have you ever paused to consider how the last glass of water you drank might have once been part of a cloud, a snowflake, or even an ocean? Isn't it a marvel to think about? This incredible passage of H2O across the globe is the concept we term as the water cycle, a fundamental segment of our Earth's ecosystem and a primary element in our everyday existence. The water cycle, or as scientists often term it, the hydrologic cycle, represents an unending and dynamic movement of from the heavens to the earth and vice versa. It's the fascinating ballet of Mother Nature that has been happening for countless years, right from the dawn of time. Imagine, if you will, the majesty and the intricacy of the whole process. Consider the vast oceans, the sprawling lakes, the meandering rivers, and the humble springs. Each drop of water in these bodies evaporates, condenses, forms clouds, falls as precipitation, and collects in water bodies only to start the cycle anew. Now think of the rainforests, the endless savannas, the towering mountain ranges, and the arid deserts. The water cycle ensures that each of these ecosystems, however diverse, gets nourished and continues to flourish. While this process may seem ordinary, it's an essential aspect of life as we know it, allowing for the sustenance of all life forms. In essence, the water cycle is the Earth's ingenious method of cleansing, rejuvenating, and recycling water. A testament to the planet's self-sustaining capabilities. It's a beautiful dance of nature that has been going on for billions of years, and essentially, it's the planet's way of recycling water. The cycle begins with evaporation. Close your eyes and imagine a serene, warm, sunny day by the Azure Sea. The radiant sunlight glistening on the surface, the endlessly stretching ocean. The grains of sand beneath your feet are hot to the touch, a testament to the sun's powerful energy that's also warming the crisp sea waves lapping at the shore. This is a common sight, one that most of us usually don't give a second thought. Yet it's a vital part of a cycle that's essential for life on Earth. Witness the incredible power of the sun as it lavishes its energy onto the surface of the ocean. This heat energy works its magic on the water, stirring it at a molecular level. Each droplet begins to vibrate, to shake, to shimmer as they absorb the heat. The energy imparted forces the water molecules to break free from their liquid state, transforming them into an invisible gas known as water vapor. This transformation of the sun's continuous effort is what we scientifically term as evaporation. This invisible water vapor, now lighter than air, starts its upward journey, rising, soaring high, defying gravity, breaking all bounds. It ascends towards the cooler and less dense parts of the atmosphere, propelled by the heat that birthed it from the surface of the ocean. Up above, away from the heat and turmoil in the peaceful coolness of the higher atmosphere, where something marvelous happens. As the water vapor rises and encounters cooler air, it begins to undergo a captivating transformation. This metamorphosis from one state to another is a common occurrence in nature, but nonetheless a wonder to behold. The vapor, once light, invisible and untouchable, gradually starts to shift back into a more tangible state, a process that is as magical as it is scientific. This transition, this beautiful change of form is what we call condensation. The essence of condensation is the transformation back into tiny liquid water droplets. It is a process that is as intricate as it is simple, an elemental dance of particles merging and converging. This act of transformation is not simply a change of state, it is a symphony of natural forces, a ballet of atoms and molecules, a spectacle of nature's ceaseless ingenuity. These minute droplets then embark on their own journey, colliding and coalescing, coming together in a grand assembly. With each collision, each union, they grow and become more substantial. They form conglomerations of mist and moisture, of vapor and droplets, creating entire worlds in miniature. These droplets, once solitary, now come together in a harmonious union, forming clouds in the sky. They create a stunning vista up above us, a spectacle that is both grand and ephemeral. They paint the sky with their presence, creating an ever-changing canvas of hues and shades, a testament to nature's endless creativity. And so, the invisible visible once again, the transformation of water vapor into droplets, and then into clouds, is a fascinating spectacle of nature, a showcase of the endless cycle of change and transformation. It is a reminder that even the most ordinary phenomena can be extraordinary when viewed through the lens of science and wonder. Next comes the part of the cycle we're most familiar with, precipitation. This is the phase where the magic happens, where the accumulated water droplets in the vast expanses of clouds high above us finally reach their breaking point. 
You see, these droplets merge slowly but surely, joining forces to form larger and heavier drops. The higher they are, the colder the temperature gets. As the droplets continue to grow in size, their weight begins to the buoyant forces of the air currents that were initially keeping them suspended. In the grand dance between gravity and buoyancy, a pivotal moment arrives. A tipping point. The sheer gravity of the situation quite literally leads to the water droplets becoming too heavy to stay afloat. This is the moment of truth, the climax of their journey. They then embark on a thrilling descent, a journey back to the surface of the Earth. This descent can occur in various forms, an array of spectacles that shower down upon us. It could be the gentle patter of rain, the soothing blanket of snow, the sharp sting of sleet, or the sudden onslaught of hail. Each form of precipitation paints a different picture, creates a unique atmosphere, contributes to the rich tapestry of our climate, a continuous cycle, a constant give and take, a dance between the sky and the earth. The manifestation of this dance? Precipitation, the part of the cycle we're most familiar with. When the water droplets in the clouds become too heavy to stay afloat, they fall back down to the surface of the earth. This can occur in various forms such as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. So the water returns to the surface of the earth, but the journey doesn't end there. What commences from here is an intricate journey that greatly impacts life on earth. Like a living, breathing entity, this water sets off on an expedition. It travels across multiple domains and undergoes several natural processes. It plays a crucial role in the life cycle of plants. Embracing the essence of nurturing, it gets absorbed by the roots of the plants. It then travels up through the stems and into the leaves. Here, the water is returned to the atmosphere through a fascinating process called transpiration. This process, which has close resemblances to evaporation, is one of the grand spectacles of nature. It is through this process that water changes its form from liquid to gaseous, eventually rising up to grace the atmosphere. The plants, acting like nature's own water pumps, play an instrumental role in maintaining the balance of water in our ecosystem. But not all water is taken up by plants. Some, in a quiet, unnoticed rebellion, chooses a different path. It seeps into the ground, breaking through the surface level, plunging into the depths. There it becomes part of massive underground water reservoirs, or aquifers. In a process known as infiltration, the water steadily percolates down through the soil and rock layers, filling these cavernous reservoirs. It's like the Earth's hidden treasure chest, a secret well that sustains life in more ways than we realize. So the water returns to the surface of the Earth, but the journey doesn't end there. Some of the water is taken up by plants and returned to the atmosphere through transpiration, a process similar to evaporation. Some seeps into the ground to become part of underground water reservoirs or aquifers in a process known as infiltration. The rest of the water, however, makes its way over the surface of the land, flowing into streams, rivers, and eventually back into the oceans, ready to start the cycle anew. This is what we call surface runoff. In essence, the water cycle is a continuous dynamic process of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, transpiration, infiltration, and surface runoff. It's a system that connects the land, the sea, and the sky. It's the reason we have fresh water to drink, rain to nourish our crops, and rivers to provide habitats for countless species. More importantly, it's a system that's perfectly balanced, and any changes to this balance can have far-reaching effects. Climate change, for example, can speed up the rate of evaporation, leading to more intense periods of rainfall and potentially flooding. In the end, the water cycle is more than just a scientific concept. It's a testament to the interconnectedness of our world, the delicate balance of nature, and the incredible journey that every single drop of water goes through. So the next time you take a sip of water or feel the rain on your face, remember the remarkable journey that water has taken to get there. I've created a poll of questions in my Telegram channel in which it will help you to get more insight regarding water cycle. I'll put the link in the description. Make sure to check that out.